Last April, some friends of mine happened to catch some newly mated carpenter ant queens for me. I was very excited because I was brand new to the hobby of ant keeping and this was my first time starting new colonies. If you're just jumping in and haven't seen that part of the story, I'd recommend starting with this episode so you can watch the full journeys of these queens unfold. I promise it will make this story all the more impactful and special. Of the five ant queens I started the year with, two of them, named Queen Midas and Aunt Bonnie, went on to successfully start their own colonies. But the queen of the Relic Raiders, who I named Laura Croft, was having a bit of trouble. She was eating some of her brood, but the ones that remained never made it past the larval stage. Even four months later, after her peers had already had workers, her brood did not seem to be developing. I thought perhaps that she was infertile and decided to release her by burying the test tube and letting nature run its course. And that was that. I figured it was the end of it and that she'd probably died months ago. This is my garden. Well, it's actually just neighborhood common area behind my house that I shamelessly terraformed for myself. Anyway, this is the spot where I buried Laura Croft, and every time I'm out here, I look over and wonder, hmm, what would I find? So last week, curiosity finally got the better of me, and I decided to dig up the test tube just to see what I would find, fully expecting to uncover a dead ant, a bunch of dirt, or just an empty tube. I looked into the exposed empty tube and saw something I didn't expect. That was a larva. <laughs> but I didn't see the queen. I cleared away a bit more dirt and... <gasps> Is that her? I was honestly shocked. I was not expecting to find her alive. I had buried her on August 3rd, which was over six months ago. She had spent four months in the box and another six months in the ground. She was literally back from the grave. Seeing as it's the middle of winter, she's probably going through diapause, which is perhaps why she survived this long. She started poking her head out of the entrance before scurrying back into the tube. She was trying to figure out what the heck was going on since she's spent over half a year in complete darkness. Question for all of you ant keepers out there. Does anyone know why she still doesn't have workers after 10 months? If she wasn't fertile, they would still be eggs, right? And the larvae are clearly still alive or they would have dried up. The next step was to give her a clean test tube. If you haven't made a test tube setup before, here's a quick 15 second tutorial. First, wash your hands and tools really well. Next, you want to fill your test tube with filtered or distilled water until it's about a third full. Then, take a cotton ball or test tube sponge, slide it down to the water while trying to eliminate air bubbles. Finally, you can dry the inside off with a cotton ball and you're done. When I started clearing out the debris, she was definitely on the defensive, guarding her nest against the evil metal tweezers. I even found the piece of foil where I left her a drop of honey. I wish I could go six months on a drop of honey. Next, I connected the tubes using the foam block and waited and almost immediately she went in to explore. When she came out, she just kind of stood there, cleaning herself for a while, trying to figure out what to do. Then eventually, walked over to one of the larvae, and... Nope, not yet. I've never managed to capture a move on camera before, because it usually takes several hours or days before they decide to move. But Laura Croft was not enjoying the light. Then, she gently picked up one of the larvae and started to head towards the cave entrance. One by one by one, she brought each of her babies into the new home. This process was slow, but felt really special to watch. However, when she ventured out to retrieve the last larva, she couldn't seem to find it, even though it was right under her nose. Looking all around, thinking, I know I left it here somewhere. Come on, girl, you're sitting on it. Then she started going back, no wait, don't give up yet, it's right there. I came back a few hours later and she had reclaimed the lost larva. Now she was all moved in and I disconnected the old tube. I think it's so fitting that her name is Laura Croft given that she spent six months in a tomb, but I'm wondering if the name Relic Raiders is still fitting after this resurrection story, or if we should give her and or her colony a new name if these larvae can develop into workers. I'd be eager to hear your ideas and suggestions in the comments. 
I still don't know if she'll be able to raise mature workers, but it feels like a miracle to find out that one of my original carpenter ant queens is still alive. I'm going to put her away for now, and who knows, maybe in a couple months we'll see some workers. But we'll just have to wait and see, as the story of the ants marches on. If you enjoyed this story and would like to see more, check out some of my other videos, or subscribe so you won't miss future episodes. Thanks for watching.